should go back to my original. We're just looking from what you guys have, your concerns from the media, not necessarily you know, answering questions. Obviously, the, the different groups that are coming to town, that's, um, that's a concern for us. Again, we want to ensure that we provide a safe platform. There's a number of, of uh, diverse groups that are coming uh, on a variety of issues, and, and we are in plan for that. <coughs> Really, what we want to what we want to do here today, and I know it's going to be kind of hard for it's your job to ask the questions, but to more along the lines of hearing your concerns, you know, access concerns, um, anything that you may have that you think may hinder your ability to cover this issue. Well, since you brought up protesters and you brought up access, are we going to have access to them? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, you expect there to be like 15,000 journalists, right. I'm and, sure. And, not. It, and it's, again, that's something that we'll come back to you with on the, the access. You know, we're going to clearly uh, communicate all of the ground rules for coverage sure. prior to. And those are the kinds of things that we would like to have input from the media on. We're going to want to report exactly on them. We're going to want to have them in the behind a live shot in the morning at noon, at night, from the air. Say, you're, so you're, focus. you're talking about having the demonstrations in the background? And yeah, I, I don't know that it would be the focus every day. I'm, I'm obviously only speaking of one station, but I mean, it's it's going to be part of the storytelling. Obviously, mm -hmm. the RNC is very exciting for us. It's great to host it. All the Murata famous people that will be here for that, but the protesters are going to be, we can't ignore it. So it'd be a a good opportunity to talk about what we can see, where we can see it. Obviously, there'll be flight restrictions on certain days, but mm -hmm. we're going to want to put our choppers up. Okay. I mean, I don't expect to see streets flooded and blocked with protesters, but you might be able to allude if I'm incorrect. I mean, can I, I mean, my understanding is, and this, this is uh, that the national news media will probably focus on the convention itself. Sure. But the local news media will probably be more interested in what's going on outside. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? Yeah, portrayal of what you guys were thinking. Or <coughs> we're trying to get a sense of what the local media is looking to cover during the event. Well, I think we all work with networks that will be doing a lot of those shots that are going to talk about what's happening inside. But I mean, our job is to let our community know what's happening in addition at a national level, but locally, what we're seeing, what we're hearing. If you think you're going somewhere, don't think you're going to this weekend. Okay. Obviously, you asked about our concerns, and I would say that one of my biggest is the safety of our crews covering right. the event. Uh, and how much thought has been given to, you know, we want access, absolutely, but we don't want to get uh, caught in the middle of anything. So that's probably my biggest concern okay. the safety of crews. And that's our intent, too, is to, um, you know, through the media subcommittee that everyone uh, in the room outside of the media is involved in. Us, that is, is one of the issues that we're dealing with as well. To develop, you know, ground rules for coverage, and then also we're not going to put anyone in harm's way. With that in mind, are, is there any sort of P's and Q's that you guys will be advising the media on, as far as how to prevent ourselves from getting caught in, you know, spraying folks with pepper spray or? You know, do we need to all go out and buy our own security gear so if they're in there, they they got their mask to pull out so they're not sucking down fumes? Or mm -hmm. how it, it, is there any sort of a meeting with the media to talk about what to watch out for, what to be cautious of? Right, and that's that's what we intend to communicate. Um, we are, are going to make up a, a pamphlet for individuals who are coming to town to, to express their opinions, to demonstrate, to protest, and I envision, I haven't thought that this is a, probably a, a better issue for the co-chair, but the same type of a thing for anyone that's going to cover the event as well. Is there a target date as far as that being prepared or having us get back together to actually sit down and talk about things to obviously watch out for, what, mm -hmm. you know, we're still waiting for the Secret Service, I guess, to come out and tell us what the perimeter is, what access we'll have versus what you guys are talking about setting up. Is there any kind of a timetable as far as you're expecting that from the Secret Service and, and, and getting to the safety of everybody concerned? Well, I don't know that the, the Secret Service is obviously an integral part of the, the subcommittee, but, um, you know, as far as the timeline, it'll be well in advance of the event itself. 
But these, you know, these are the types of things that we're having this uh, meeting for is to <coughs> find out those issues, you know, what the ground rules are, personal safety issues, how you can cover the event in the best way possible. Those are the types of issues that we're looking for. Well, well I was just going to say our intention, um, and we looked at June, uh, is what we're targeting, is to make a, a visit to each media outlet. And in that, during that visit, we would be bringing you ground rules. That this is a little different than covering Gasparilla or the Super Bowl. So, you know, here's the best way to stay safe, avoid conflict, have good access to cover the event. The first step is hearing from you guys. We need to know what are your logistical challenges. What are the things that we need to address when we make these visits to the media outlets? And so this is really a chance for us to take in information, and then we'll come to you um, much closer to the event, most likely in June, uh, that we'll pay a visit to each one of your stations to bring you those guidelines. What would happen in the event that, you know, the crowd of this size, somebody's always not going to get the message? one way or the other. We're in a situation where we think we have access, rules that said we first have access, and we don't have access. How do you, how do you propose to resolve a situation like that? What should we do? Oh, just bring the bond money. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, really, uh, for our local media, obviously, we have a long term relationship with you guys, and we want to avoid anything like that happening. That's why we kind of take this step today, and then we're making the rounds. That's the last thing that we want to have happen. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay, but what I'm saying is a spot new situation. You think, okay, I'm going to talk to this guy, and you know, the message doesn't get communicated somehow that we're allowed to talk to them and, you know, spur them on the thing that's happening right in front of us. What would, what would you recommend to resolve a situation like that because it always happens? Carl Buck and I are, you know, essentially we're going to be in the field as much as possible, especially during the energetic side, the kind that you're talking about. And if all else fails and somehow and the event's going to be dynamic, so the things that we lay out in June and we try to cover everything for me to see um, can morph during that week. So there's going to be the command and control and the span of control on the field is going to be incredible. And essentially, those little pockets of situations that you may want to interview, you're just going to have to follow the ground instructions at that point. Just like you would if you walked into a crime scene today, if something dynamic was happening in, in County or in the city, <coughs> you would look towards the, the guidance and the leadership of, of the officers and commanders on the ground for that kind of advice. And, and if there isn't any direction, then I, I'd have to say, without seeing a scenario or talking about a specific scenario, that it would be the same thing that would go on in any street where you have the ability to, to talk to somebody. So I guess what I'm saying is, you'll I think you'll know if there's something that you're, you're going to need guidance for on the scene for your own safety. And all of the public information officers in here will be available. So you'll have contact numbers that you can reach. And we're also relaying this information to all of the officers that will be working with crowd management as well. What about prohibited items in the clean zone ordinance if it passes as is? I mean, something like, you know, strings longer than six inches. I have cords for my microphone that are longer than six inches, so technically that would be kind of in a gray area there. Well, the overriding element of any law is common sense. And so officers, you know, if you're a reporter and you have cords and cables and things that have to be taken to a certain location, then common sense dictates that you'll be able to use those. What type of clearance is it going to be for getting equipment and tools in and out? <laughs> and along those uh, lines, there's going to be a, a special area where the media goes in and out. Um, because I think one of the big concerns is you have something to do, and it might take you two hours to get through like a security uh, entrance or something like that. So it'll be a special way to find those are, Yes, yeah. and those are things that we're going to be, you know, the closer we get when we find out exactly what the road closures are, all of the traffic related issues, that's what we're going to be uh, relaying to the community and then also to the media as well so that you will know how much time you have to factor in prior to, you know, if you have to be there at, 
at one o'clock today, you know, you may have thought, well, give me 15 minutes to get down to the police department. That's not going to be the same come August 27th. So we feel like by June, we should have a good feel for what some of the delays are. And we, our suggestion will be to pad even the amounts of time that we believe it will take so that nobody misses the deadline. She had two kind of elementary uh, issues. One, kind of along those lines, uh, parking. Uh, they're not talking about like uh, reporters and so forth trying to get down. They're talking about live trucks and things like that. Is there going to be a designated area uh, outside of zone one where the media can be parking that we can leave vehicles, or how is that going to work? And then the other question, and, and this may sound, uh, you know, a very simple question right now, but I can see a lot of frustration down the road, and that is. Who is really going to be the point person in the agencies that we're going to go to? I know now we sometimes get, well, it's not TV, that's Secret Service. Secret Service doesn't want to talk. I can see the night or, or you know, nights during the convention when we're out there and we're getting, no, that's not ours, uh, our responsibility, we're not talking about that, and trying to get information and being making sure that we can get to the appropriate people in a timely fashion. Okay, and we'll have There's no mix up in, in communication or what that's going to be. Okay, and that's an issue that, that um, we'll try to address in those visits as well as exactly where, you know, a staging area for the trucks and, and exactly where the media will go outside of the, the uh, footprint. And the, the Joint Information Center, you know, those will be plenty of people in there. And again, it's, it's incumbent upon us to continue our great relationship through the RNC. So you'll, you'll be able to get your answer. Um, I have a question, not so much about the full protesters, but the, the violent ones. If we're in there and we're covering it live, like we'll be asked if they're alive, and get stuck up in a detainment, I don't know if that's what I'm saying. I actually know I'm thinking about it. Because I guess we're just going to be able to be sure to bring it to help identify the system to get out of that detainment. And that will be included in the, the ground news when we, when we provide that. What about the public viewing areas and parade routes, once those are established, will there be any kind of limited access to those, or is that just kind of fair game for media? No, I'm sure that it, it's better for everyone to provide uh, an area that you guys can cover all of these events from, and that will be one of the issues as well that will... What do you mean provide an area that we could cover the events from? You could from? cover if you wanted to, to cover the parade route or um, the public viewing area. That there would be a designated media area in there that would be able to cover those events from. But doing that, would we have access to actually speak to the protesters? Because otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose. Like, who, who's going to help you pick those media savvy places? <laughs> We're going to have a lottery when this is done. <laughs> <laughs> you get to pick where it's at. No, it, obviously, the, the public information officers are the ones that are going to be designing all of that, and they have your best interests in, in mind. Have you looked at, uh, um, and forgive me if this has been discussed in the past, have you looked at doing some kind of credentialing of just local media and so forth? Because I can see a scenario where you've got protesters that will, you know, I'm a member of a blog or whatever. I mean, it's very easy to make a credential. And you guys talked about doing an official, here's an all local media, whoever, and, and, you know, so that it's very easy for your department to identify, okay, this is an official credential from, and we know that you're, you know, you're a, a credible news organization. I have a question for the media. How do, how do you differentiate between the credible media and the bloggers? Is there a, any type of, Rules for that. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What, what, how you in the media would differentiate from a credible media <coughs> and a blogger? Yeah. By May, I mean, we have our own media, you know, uh, mm -hmm. public issue uh, uh, media pass. That would be one way. But to this point, that is a concern for many of the photographers. Um, speaking to many of my staffers who have covered these um, conventions in Minneapolis. Denver, photographers uh, have been arrested because they have been mistaken, and a lot of the protest groups have grown the photographers. So as you know, mm -hmm. there are many cameras out there. So it would be good if we consider anything that could distinguish us you know, from the rest of the crowd. And it's also a little tough because you put something like that on, and then you're a mark. 
you know. So I mean, we've got a situation where do you go now with your Channel 8 shirt on, you know, and your Channel 8 truck and so on and so forth, or do you go in and be as, you know, innocuous as you can be? And then back to your answer, there is no way to, I mean, there's that fine line between blogger and, you know, credential <coughs> journalist, and, you know, there are debates, there are court, I mean, it just goes back and forth, so there's really no answer to that, but it's, you know, but it's a concern. I mean, another thing I'd like to add, too, is, I mean, if you look at these two cameras, I mean, this one, you would think, is from a legitimate television station. A lot of, some others have, like, DSLRs or have a smaller camera, but are still working for legitimate, you know, organizations. Um, I mean, I think it, it might not be a bad idea, at least for the locals, to come up with a credential that all TP officers, all law enforcement in the local area would be able to identify local media as legitimate, you know, I mean, and they, if, if there's bloggers, they can certainly apply through you guys to get the credentials. And that is a good example. You've got three different cameras there. I mean, so you've got a flip cam, you know, I mean. Yeah, and you can't you do that anymore. Where it used to be, yeah, big camera, you know, big media person. <laughs> Apparently, I don't look very official. <laughs> but I mean, you're gonna have a. I mean, I mean there's an array of, right. of camera, you know, sizes and types. I think we can all agree that the, the media line is somewhat blurred. Everyone has a cell phone camera. In the well, I would say, too, that a lot of the locals are going to want to be discreet. And I work for Fox, so consider showing up with a Fox logo at a protest. So, you know, we're going to want to be <coughs> as discreet as possible. You know, so, and, and that's, a, that's a, certainly a good point to be brought up, is that, one, you know, you're the local media covering this event for your viewers, but yet you don't necessarily want to be in your uh, outlets. But why wouldn't you want to wear a Channel 8 shirt? Um, you might have somebody, you know, who doesn't like Channel 8, <coughs> or who, you know, who targets me in general. Uh, I have not. I know, who, um, you know, you want to identify yourself, but I mean, you literally, you'll be a target when you go out there because protesters, you know, from what I understand, it's not just even um, going against the convention, it's going against the establishment of the media for the convention. And it might be, you know, your guys say something on a Tuesday night, and then by Thursday, everyone's like, if you see a Channel 8 vehicle, slash the tires and do whatever you can because they were really mean to us two days ago. And so, and, that, and that's tough because from the law enforcement point of view, you want to know the difference between that person and someone just in from out of town, maybe to cause trouble, but at the same time, we have to be concerned about our safety and not basically putting a big target on our heads or backs. Is that something that the group feels, or is that kind of a unique perspective? I think it's legitimate. I've heard that from a lot of the time. So you're afraid of the anarchists too? As well. I mean, there's some, there's some nut jobs out there that, that really, I mean, oh, you said something bad about me. Well, we are going to go after you. I mean, that, I think that's a legitimate concern. Well, and I don't even think it's just a safety issue. I mean, I'm sure it can be a safety issue, but I've had plenty of occasions where people with certain political views, you know, don't want to talk to you because they view your organization as having opposing political views. So I, it, it does happen not even just from a safety standpoint, but from a accessibility to information standpoint. So... Writing um, for your credentials inside. 
um, is there a desire to have any type of set outside and that's what you go live from, <coughs> for, from each location or is it just a reporter standing there? Like, it, it, what's your preference? Um, it kind of depends on what the setup is. I mean, if there's a secure place to oversee the protest zone, I think that we want some marked out territory here. I don't know if we build a set there. But um, it kind of depends on where everything goes. It would be useful to have a place to go to that we know is somewhere protected. We may not go there, but at least it'd be nice to know that we have a place outside of the building to we need to. Where your trucks are parked for long. Sure. I mean, has, has TPG thought about, you know, there's a lot set up everybody in that lot, trucks set, so it's kind of, you have this exterior view of uh, the farm, and I don't know if you guys have any thought about that, or? Mm -hmm. Is that Al Lopez Park? <laughs> but I mean, if that was something that gets designated, I would like to get some engineers on it because you know downtown's not the easiest microwave shot. Um, and satellite, of course, is expensive, which we all know we're going to spend money. But I would like to include some of the technical side of me if you are going to be picking a downtown lot, but a more tall building. To more to your point, I think some stations are kind of waiting to find out what, what you guys say in terms of what we make those decisions are. But I mean, for nothing else, for this area, we, we know that, you know, let's say on Tuesday night, and things are very chaotic, it is a safe area that our crews can go to to edit the feedback stories and so forth, you know, just so that there is some area that we know we can get to and we're going to be okay. So, um, I'm with radio. I haven't heard of saying anything. Our, some of our issues are we're doing the morning show and we need to have parking that will be close. Has that been discussed? Will we actually be able to park and use the dimension parking? Or is that just for larger trucks? We're not sure exactly where we're going to go. That early in the morning, we want to feel safe and protected. And would you guys be broadcasting live from there or just trying to get down and have access? No, we're live, radio row at 6 a.m. So we're going to be there around 3 a.m. Everybody will just be going to bed. You may have to rent some protesters. <laughs> That's probably a concern for everybody because all the TV stations have early morning shows, so they're going to be down there in on one uh, form or, or another, you know, getting in and out, getting in and out. And that might be a, you know, a good uh, time or good use of a preset stage somewhere where you could have a visual of the convention center and the forum because you know, there won't be a lot of pedestrian activity at that time of the gift. And then maybe we look at having a lockdown location, you bring in your live truck and that's your truck for the duration so you're not getting trucks in and out at the change of shifts. Mm -hmm. But then we can figure out security for that truck. Mm -hmm. We're actively meeting and looking at all the space. It's, you know, of course, for everything we rent the media, um, public view, parade route. So we'll just fold that into the discussion and see if, if there's a space outside the secure zone that works for a huddle or so to speak. And I think that was to the chief's point earlier. I want to make sure that, I mean, I understood it a certain way from the badge side of the equation, but to make sure it's understood the other way. I think that there's a difference between logistics and access. We're trying to support your logistics and to make sure you get the access you need to the parade ground and to the public viewing area. So I wouldn't combine access and logistics in the same, you know, same thought process. They are different. So we're going to try and support your logistics by seeing if we can find space for you to do the things you need to do in a safe and secure way to allow you the access and the field to do it. How are you going to uh, getting people downtown, other than live trucks. Uh, we will get live trucks down there eventually, no matter what we have to go through. But there are going to be a lot more people working down there that aren't going down to live trucks. Will we have to go through a, an outer perimeter and get approved to go through and then drive down to the forum? Or are there buses we're going to get on and go down to the forum? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, we'll have to get that worked out. It has to do with, with you know, everyone, with anybody that's coming into the downtown area. Uh, traffic probably will be our number one issue. And so the more... So it's not going to be open access to just drive your car down. It will be open access. What will, what 
you know, going to be most prohibitive is the volume of traffic. And that will be dependent on the hours as well. So we'll, um, we're looking at you know, individuals who are working in the downtown area to have them bust in and try to eliminate as much traffic as we can ahead of time. situations we have gas delivered or we all pull together we get like a giant generator or, no we have a giant truck deliver the gas to all the trucks we've yeah. had that done too we've had that done before but we need to good luck getting that truck with some gas Talk security breach. <laughs> Jeez. Are there going to be any change in the procedures or terms of the time frame for getting your arrest reports and police reports during that time? I mean, one, I'm thinking about just a sheer volume of it. And two, like, I don't know, for example, do you have different procedures for what constitutes an arrest here? I mean, there's going to be so many, okay, we're just going to start tricking our traffic tickets and you get a citation. You'll, you'll be getting, the right sheriff's right. office is handling all of the booking details, okay. and you'll be getting information in a very, very timely fashion. And it's our hope that there aren't any arrests, much less mass arrests. You know, we are in law enforcement, we prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So uh, you'll, that information will come out in a very timely fashion. Will there be daily briefings or regular briefings? And if so, where would those be taking place? That's, that's all being set up. There certainly will be daily briefings, but that's all being set up with, through the, through the subcommittee. And you guys will receive all of that information to you know where it's going to be, what times. That's all subject to change time wise, but hopefully the location. 